I actually heard this last week uh, from somebody who said in uh, a high school student who said in their geography class, their teacher spent a big portion of the class discussing with everyone how all religions are the same, that Buddhism and you know Islam and Christianity. They said they were particularly coming from the standpoint of uh, in Buddhism, Buddha is the Jesus of Buddhism, and in Islam, you know, Muhammad is the Jesus of Islam, and Jesus is the Jesus of Christianity, and you know, every religion has their Jesus in it, and we're all just the same. We all just want something to believe in, and we just got to figure out how to get along, and it, it's kind of odd, like you said, though. It, it, it can't all be the same, like I mentioned last week. Truth is truth. Like it can't, it, Muhammad can't be Jesus, can't be God, and at the same time, Jesus be the only way to God. Like that's they're exclusive of each other. That just doesn't work. Um, but this is a, a huge movement that's going on and will continue to go on. And I, I encourage all of you, I think uh, really what the church needs, at least from you know, my standpoint and the way I'm looking at things, is a return to the, the topic of apologetics, of understanding what we believe in Christianity, really having a solid grasp on it, uh, and then being able to tell other people about that. You know, a lot of times, if you ask people, why do you believe that Jesus died from the dead? We don't know other than that's what we learned in church, and that's what we heard. That's what our pastor told us, and that's what I read in the Bible. Um, but, you know, you can actually, Christianity has so many supporting documents, both inside and outside of Christianity, um, out, of, out of the Bible, I should say, that support Jesus rising from the dead, that it makes it a very unlikely and untenable thing that he didn't rise from the dead. And there's lots of reasons for that. Um, but if you don't know that, you can just say, well, because the Bible says so. And people can say, well, why do you think that's true? All they have to do is ask a few questions to most of us, and we crumble. Because it's just like, well, because that's what I believe, and I have a right to believe what I believe. And we usually get hostile out of lack of understanding for ourselves. You know? It's like, well, I don't, I don't really know the answer to that one, but you shouldn't be questioning me, that type of thing. So... I really, honestly, I encourage all of you. There's a really good, there, there's a few set of books out there. Uh, Lee Strobel has put together some just phenomenal stuff for Christians to be able to read. A uh, Case for Christ, A Case for Faith, um, all of these books. Like, he even has videos. If you're not a big book person, you can get the DVDs. Just look for Lee Strobel, Case for Christ, or A Case for Faith. You know, write it down now. If you really, if you really want to know more about, you know, the truth behind what we believe, what we believe, like, People sometimes have this idea about faith that it's just, you know, you can just make something up and believe in it, and that's faith. But faith actually has to have a foundation to stand on. Like, there has to be truth in it for it to be well-founded true faith. You know, I can have faith that if I jump off the building today, I'll fly. But unless that's founded in some type of actual factual thing, I'll fall and I'll die. <laughs> it's just, it's, I'm going to crack my head open. Uh, there's reasons why we believe Jesus died from the dead and it's, or rose from the dead. It is important to know what those reasons are. Uh, it really is. Uh, there's reasons that uh, we believe that he is God above all the other gods. And it's more than just that's what my pastor said or that's what, you know, that's what we choose to believe. You have to, re you have to really understand this. And that's a part of that is, is a, the study is called apologetics. And it's being able to, def to defend the Christian faith logically and with reason and with understanding. Because we, we do live in a logical world, and that's part of, uh, you know, part of our Trinitarian being. We're spirit, soul, and body. Uh, we can't just say, well, it's all spirit, and we don't need to really know anything in our soul. It's just all a big spiritual thing. No, we're, we're three parts. We've got to take care of our body. We've got to take care of our soul, and we've got to take care of our spirit, too. Um, so I, I implore all of you, get a hold of some of these materials. Uh, there's tons of stuff online. If you really want to look into some really interesting stuff, there's a general, uh, Ravi Zacharias, William Lane Craig, um, lots of these guys, uh, they all have really good information on apologetics and why the Christian faith is the only faith that really is supportable. Um, so it's something to look into, honestly. We, I am putting that on my list. You know, Again, we're making this list for the end times. What is important for our children to know? What's important for us to know? And that's on the list. Like a Deeper than just that's what my parents told me or that's what my church told me, a strong... Uh, a strong, well-placed conviction and faith that Jesus is God, that Jesus you know, died and rose again, and that uh, he's the only way to heaven, and they'll be able to be able to say that and understand why, and all their reasons behind it, and explain that to somebody else. I think that's a good goal to have on the list, because uh, 
when you know what you believe, it's hard to be tricked or uh, told to sold something that some other bill of goods and be sold into something else. If you truly know what you believe, and that's, you know, like he said, just the simple thing. If you just look at Christian Christianity and Islam, face value, it's like, well, we both serve one God and, you know, it could all be the same. And then you look at details like, yeah, they don't ever believe Jesus died on the cross. They don't believe him to be God. They don't, uh, it's like, those are just aren't, you can't consolidate those things and say, it's okay. It's just little minute differences about, you know, sin and redemption and salvation and heaven and hell and, you know, eternal life and how we get to heaven. Just little differences. Uh, yeah, we'll just gloss it over and we'll all be good. It's like, no, they're not little differences. It's, it's not. Uh, so I say all that to say uh, there's, a lot, uh, there's a lot that we can all be doing to grow our own faith and uh, deepen our own faith and prepare our children for. Um, so uh, with that, we will pray. And uh, next week we'll be back. The pastors will be here, and uh, we'll move forward. Father God, we thank you so much for your word, Lord God. Lord Jesus, the scripture says that you are the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, Lord God. So we look to you, Lord Jesus, the person that the word embodies. Lord God, we thank you that you are a person and that we have a relationship with you as a as an actual living, breathing being. We thank you for that, Lord God, and we look to you, the person. We look to you, the individual. We look to you, uh, the individual part of a trinity, to speak to us, to lead us, to guide us in these last days, to give us the information that we need. I pray, give us all a hunger and a desire to really, truly know what we believe and why we believe it, so that as this uh, idea of universalism and uh, all of these ideas start to become more and more and more prevalent and powerful that we aren't washed away, Lord God. We aren't swept away in this flood. We'll be able to stand strong and firm and be a lighthouse to those around us because there is only one truth. There is only one truth. There is only one way. Give us, Lord God, a desire to understand why that is and what that is in Jesus' name. Pray for safety for all of us as we leave and go about our, our week and, uh, Lord Jesus, that this would stick with us and go with us wherever we go. In Jesus' name, amen.